Coming up, we are going to talk about the scare zones of Halloween Horror Nights 27, and then Rhino and I went and we got a tasty treat at Universal Studios Florida. All that coming up next from the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida. This is the Universal Edition of The Diz Unplugged. This is episode 141 of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. The Diz Unplugged Universal Edition is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect universal vacation. Please visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's uh, episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. I am your host, as always, Craig Williams, joined alongside by my co-host. You know him best as his name, Mr. Rhino Clavin. Well, hello. 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 Hey, nice yes. to see you today. Yes. 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 Good Good times. Good mm. time. Um, yeah, so we have a, a very fun episode. Um today for you uh, of course as we kind of predicted it last week um right after uh you know right it, i think it was right after i finished editing the show and as it was starting its slow progress to uploading to youtube that is when you know the time rolled around that of course universal had to drop more halloween horror nights news on us um go figure it, it seems like that always happens now when we uh, pre-record stuff but um, they're catfishing us man Hey, not catfishing us. Trolling us? They, trolling us. Yeah, we'll say they're trolling us. But hey, it ends up being a good thing because, uh, uh, you know, we were so busy this week with Eclipsin and other stuff like that that uh, we didn't really have time to prepare anything. So it was kind of kind of nice that uh, this ended up falling into our lap. Uh, a nice, big, juicy topic. So uh, I'm very excited about that. We are going to talk about that in just a couple seconds from now. Um, but definitely, I know some of you hate the Halloween Horror Night stuff. You hate talking Halloween, especially in August. Um, you know, we'll, we'll make it as fun as we can, but you're definitely going to want to stay tuned because we have another snack review for you um, mm -hmm. right after we're done talking about that. So I'm not going to give away where it is, what we did, all of that. It's a secret. We'll introduce it once we cut away to that um, that snack review, but um it's it, it's definitely a good one um and yeah i i cannot wait for you guys to see that and get feedback on it so um snacks snacks always delicious and that's all i have to say about snacks <laughs> i don't even i, I These started pretzels are making me thirsty yeah, i i started to go down this wormhole of like um, i have something to say i have something to say and then it just went away and i decided to make it as awkward as possible <laughs> in uh in ending what i was going to say so why don't we kick it off and let's talk about the last round of announcement for halloween horror nights and that is all five scare zones plus our second show, besides Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, as well as um, one other aspect of it. So we are going to start with the one that, uh, you know, we, we knew, we were hoping it was coming and mostly expecting it. And that is Academy of Villains will be back for the second year in a row now. And this time they will be coming back with a brand new show called Afterlife. So Rhino, I, I mean, I've gone on record many many times now uh when talking about halloween horror nights last year as well as um uh, as well as this year and leading up to it saying that i i just wanted academy of villains to come back even though they were dance troupe they were one of the most entertaining things i've, I've seen at halloween horror nights in general um did you get to watch no it, what i i it's not what i thought it was because you said they were dancers and i thought it was that stage that thing where chance murdered the people on stage what was that called are you are you talking about the carnage returns from two years ago yeah i, I think that's what i thought it was <laughs> i'm sorry so no i didn't i don't think i ended up seeing this ever i was too busy in the houses being too scared oh my gosh well did you ever go back with your ticket yeah you yeah, did i went like three or four times like three or four, i i remember waiting with you for the show to start and then i had to leave for some reason 
Oh, no, no, I absolutely remember it. No, because uh, I remember no, no, no. standing off to the side, and we were watching the stage, and then I was like, okay, I, I got to go now. No, I gotta that, was, go. that was two years ago at Carnage Returns, because oh. you had you were going to watch that full show, but then uh, one of your uh, translator friends was going to, um, you were going to watch their show over at Bill and Ted's oh, that's to do right. translating. Yeah, 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 so I had to meet them at the, at the specific time to get into the show, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so you you didn't even watch our video on of Academy of Villains last year? You yes. have not? Is that what you're trying to go for yes. there? Yes. Yeah. I'm sure it's a good video. Um, I mean, it's an accurate video of what the show was. Um, no, this so many highlights in Academy of Villains last year. Um, you know, lots of people lost their minds over the uh, during the one portion of the show where they did uh, Queen. They did Bohemian Rhapsody. Then they all put their hands together and made like mouths. And uh, I'll probably end up layering B-roll on top of this so that way I, I don't just... But for audio, you're hearing me stammer through this while uh, Rhino's trying to look up the show <laughs> to, to see what it actually looked like. But no, they, they so many uh, cool moments. Like during the Evanescence portion where they did... Um, bring, bring Me to Life. Bring Me to Life. And Can't they, wake up. Do you, so do you read no, no, no you still never like saw it so. oh they did it in front of they did like a where was the stage even this was the um stage that set up right outside central park area that um they use it for rock the universe and then they transform it in so <gasps> oh yeah. yeah 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 no i didn't i didn't know what the stage is you're trying <laughs> <laughs> i definitely didn't watch it oh man. um and i i think it was just a matter of like it was crowded or something like that and i was like nah bye Oh no! It, it was so 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 good, and yeah, during the "Bring Me to Life" sequence, they they did like you know, Ew. basically they just projected. Uh, they had a white curtain come out, and they just projected all these different like little effects um, onto the screens while they were dancing. And uh, I mean, there Why there was so many. Why did I not watch good... the show? I love dancing. I don't know how you didn't. And also, like, I, I, wait. So this was on the stage where they do the concerts for Mardi Gras. No, no, Under no. Rock that's that's the main stage. Oh. That's the Universal Studios Plaza stage. This is just the pop up stage. The one outside of Mel's. Right outside of Mel's. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I I Chance was not last year. That was Chance was the icon last year, but the Carnage Returns where she was out there with uh, with Jack. That was two years ago. Oh my God! What is happening in life? How are we? We're just we're just dying. We're just dying. I'm just boggled that you didn't watch it. Like you have to watch the full thing now. Well, we, now I'm we, disappointed that I have it. Didn't watch this because watching the video, this does look pretty cool. It, I mean, I don't want to like be this bold, but watching this show completely changed me on dancing. Like watching these people doing what they were doing um, with mostly, you know, just their regular moves were good, but the special effects that they incorporated into their show, which I know that's what people do all the time on like uh, America's Got Talent and some of those variety shows where they're they're showcasing people who are doing it, but seeing it in person was just well, this is cool because like, awesome. it, it's like telling a story that still oh, fits yeah. into Halloween Horror Nights. Because my big thing in like Hollywood is I never take the time to watch the Jabberwockies, who are not returning this year, I believe. No, they are. Oh, yeah, Jabberwockies. Did are they announce back. them finally? Yeah, it was on the website. It was just like kind of oh, okay. I thought they there. finally weren't coming back, but um, it just like that. I don't make it doesn't make sense to me. I guess. I don't know. Maybe I'd have to watch it too now. But this, like, watching this video is like, okay, it's like an insane asylum and they're all dancing. Yeah. And, like, it definitely fits into the aesthetic. And it's something cool and different. Like, I guess oh. it kind of fits in more than Bill and Ted, maybe even. I actually I <laughs> agree with that. Bill and Ted is a staple of Halloween Horror Nights, and that's why it is sad to see it go. I, I, but... I, yeah, it will be my one of the most, like, the things that I'll miss the most. Yeah. But, it, it it is one that I have sat and been like, this is just like a normal thing. This I don't know what this has to do with Halloween. Yeah, like I that this show kind of gave me the same feeling as you would get from uh, watching Rocky Horror. While it wasn't overly like, you know, it, it just felt right at Halloween Horror Nights. Oh, watching the them put that on there. What's that? There's the mouth. Yeah, no, so it, there, it's so cool. So we are going to make it a priority. The problem is mm -hmm. on the first night uh, that we go and we do our, our media group for it, um, they basically, they put us through presentations over and over again uh, for the first like hour or two of the event, give us drinks, all that. And then they rush us out to the houses starting at like 930 and 
so basically you go straight to Bill and Ted's or you go straight to houses, do them, stop at Bill and Ted's in the middle of it, and you don't get to see like Academy of Villains. Um, you don't get to spend a lot of time in the scare zone, stuff like that. So uh, it, it's very hard because, you know, we have so much fun on that first night going with the media, but you just kind of, it, it all ends up being a blur that night. So we will spend lots of time. Is this, is this a universal trained dance group or is this a famous dance group? Like the Jabberwockies are a it, famous dance It's like group. that. Like yeah, that? They're, they're like that. So they have their own dance troupe. They're based out of LA too, I believe. I was going to say, they w- watching the clips of this video right now, they're just, they're pretty spectacular actually. Oh, it, no, that it, it's one of those things. Like I, I think I watched the show every single night that I went to Halloween Horror Nights. If it was, if it, the only, I know there was one time that I left and that was because it started pouring down rain. Otherwise, I was sitting right outside of Mel's waiting for the show and then ended up, ended up raining. But um, if, if it was ever a night where it was busy, I would go for like, you know, get there early, do your couple of houses before it opens, maybe do like one house once the wait started getting long, watch Academy of Villains, and then I'd bounce. So um, I'm so excited that it's coming back. But let's talk about the scare zones now. Uh, well, before we do that, we do have to mention roaming hordes will be back. I know you love roaming hordes. I don't know what that is. <laughs> okay, so roaming hordes are the ones who will just be walking around the random areas. Like last year in Springfield, you had the, um, the like cheerleaders the, oh, with chainsaws. God, no, no. And, uh, I don't like them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, the good news They'd is... Just be like, oh, there's a geisha. She's got a chainsaw. And you're like, what the? What does that have to do? But then she runs at you and you scream and run away. Well, this year, the roaming hordes will be clowns. So they oh, are... even freaking better. <laughs> they are unhappy with how pop culture has made them scary so uh so they're gonna fight back by being scary yeah so if the world wants scary clowns then they are going to deliver oh, nightmares <laughs> like scary clowns i i like i like clowns is uh roaming hordes i mean clowns just they, they fit in so well and especially if this area if they stick them all around springfield i feel like clowns in springfield just it feels right especially with crusty's yeah head right outside i hope the they play the the uh Treehouse of Horror soundtrack this year. Yeah, Every year, I hope. Yeah, and still, still hasn't delivered yet. You're going to have to start writing letters. <sighs> oh, my God. I'm just, I'm nervous now. I thought I was fine before, and now I'm like, now i got to worry about clowns or chainsaws. Oh, I didn't I didn't wake up thinking this is what I'd be worrying about this afternoon. I know. It'll wake me up inside. <laughs> but that's, that's okay. So Save me. <laughs> let's talk about our scare zones now. I'm, uh, I'm just going to say flat out, I'm saving the best for last. Okay. The so one that I'm most down, excited yeah. about. I think, I think everyone knows that one. But uh, let's start with the first one. It will be uh, the first one you go through when you walk into the park, and that's Atlas of Horror. So this will be on Avenue of the Stars. So, uh, of course, if you're unfamiliar with the technical names, Atlas of uh, – sorry <laughs> – Avenue of the Stars is going to be that area in between Despicable Me and Shrek. And uh, yeah, so this scare zone will um, take some, uh, according to Universal, this will take some of the larger than life characters featured in this year's houses and place them all in one location. And you will have the uh, opportunity to get up close with the iconic film characters featured in those houses, but in the streets. So um this I iconic mean, in the streets villain in the sheet i don't know what i'm saying people in the streets people everywhere well we were talking about queen earlier yeah. so it's yeah like, it's, that's the musical theme of this week and it's so. coming full circle um so this one obviously sounds cool uh a few years back when they did um the 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 um the drive-in Back in the San Francisco portion of the park, I loved how you had, um, you know, it switched off between the black and white Universal Classic Monsters and then um, the more modern uh, horror stars would come out, including when they had uh, Chucky and his bride, which I always forget her name. So I'm not even going to pretend like I'm going to try to. Jennifer Tilly's character. Yeah. Ver- no. Yeah, I'm, I'm oh, not- my God. I literally just saw it yesterday. Okay. Sorry. No, I'll that, look it up. That's fine. Um, yeah, I'm not going to pretend and act like I'm going to pull it all to, out of my head right now, but I loved <laughs> that scare zone so much. So this sounds like it's going to be... Tiffany. 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 
Tiffany, that's right. I did know that. Um, this sounds like it's going to be kind of similar in a fashion, except uh, because it's saying that you're going to take the iconic film characters that are in the houses but put them out on the streets. Uh, the only thing that comes to mind, uh, like the first thing jumping out at me, is are there really a lot of iconic characters that are, are going to be able to be out on the streets? So he- hear me out on this. Mm-hmm. Hear me mm-hmm. out. Hear me out. Um, so let's. Uh, one of the things I know from like uh, taking the Unmasking the Horror tour last year and talking to my friend who uh, was in the know about all that stuff, like when they they were casting for American Horror Story, uh, it's it, it definitely it, it was a challenge for them. They they were able to find people who match these characters extremely well, like for something like American Horror Story. Um, and, you know, they, they took them and they they were able to have enough and have the backups so that they would always have, you know, they would always be able to run the house. It wasn't like, you know, because you can't for something like that, you can't fall back on saying, well, let's we'll just put a mask over them. You can't put a mask over uh, just a regular person and turn them into Jessica Lang instantly or yeah. Lady Gaga. That that just doesn't work that way. So um, it's like. Are they able to cast enough people for a scare zone that's taking iconic film characters well, and they, putting them in the streets? They must have already cast the people, right, by now? Yeah. I, I would I would have hoped they did the casting before they made the announcement, but I guess they would have had to do the planning. I guess you're right. It is one of those, like, what did they do first? Did they have this in the – obviously, they had this area in the plan first. What happens if they get to the end of it and they're like, well, we've got one Jack Torrance. Yeah, and that's well. I mean, and they're gonna have to have so many for the houses. Right. And I, I'm, I reread this like six times to make sure that I'm not wrong. But it, like verbatim on their site, in this zone, we're taking some of the larger than life characters featured in this year's houses and letting them have their own scare zone. A lot of work goes into bringing these iconic film characters to life in our houses. Now you'll have the opportunity to get an even better look at them. So. I mean, I'm, I, I'd say that, this is where the best looking ones are going to be. It, potentially, yeah. This is this is where the ones, you know, when you are in a house, it's easier to distract people of it. But, you know, by putting film characters, does that mean we're only going to get characters from uh, The Shining? And what what other houses do we have? We have American Horror Story. We have Ash vs. Evil Dead. That's a TV show. Maybe I'm reading into this way too much at this point. Um, but, yeah. Uh, you know, but then we hmm. still we're waiting on the which I will now pronounce it correctly because apparently I didn't last week. Blumhouse, not Bloom House yeah, as I was saying before. Um, Blumhouse, uh, we're still waiting on that. And obviously, um, like if you have the well, we already have the purge here, but you're going to be able to take some of the characters from all the the uh, the the Blumhouse movies and put them out in there too. So maybe this is where a lot of those are going to be. Um, and I, I, I don't know. It's just, I, this is going to be a very interesting scare zone. Lots of good picture opportunities, I'm sure. But other than that, I'm perplexed. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm always open to photo opportunities. Oh, yeah, absolutely. No, photo ops are great. Yeah. I love photo ops. Uh, so we will move along. I just mentioned The Purge, so we might as well bring that up. Um, the Purge is coming back to the streets of New York, which is fitting. Been there before. Uh, it, it works out for that area um, just just really well. Uh, they promise in this one that there will be fan favorites returning from uh, past past appearances there. So they, they said that the auction is going to come back. So I'm guessing they're going to dust off the school bus and have the auction auction back on top of that again um and you know i probably dig out the truck that they were pulling the people for the auction from and driving that Mm -hmm. out Mm -hmm. i'm I'm sure the vehicles will have a heavy heavy presence in there but yeah i I feel like they're going to do a best of the purge this time around and hopefully they throw in um at that point the uh, third purge film wasn't out yet if i can remember correctly i don't believe it was no i I no it came out the following year i think yeah so election year hadn't come out yet so this does it does invite an opportunity for more 
I think in um, when I went to yeah when I went to it in uh, Hollywood last October, um, they had a lot yeah. from election year because there if you watch the video we did, there's a lot of people in yeah. the colonial outfits. And yeah, stuff. they did they did election year Creepy. out in Hollywood, but Creepy. they they didn't do it um, they didn't do it here. Which you know I'm I'm actually a fan of all the Purge movies. I think I, they're not perfect. They're not even great. I would I say still haven't even seen a single. Oh one. my gosh, that they're more of. Like, they're not scary movies, per se. They're more thrillers. I'm not afraid of them being scary, yeah. but it's just one of those, like, I, I interpreted them more as, like, mm, like how Saw became just more about being gore. Like, the, 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 the gore, what's the word? I used it last week. I already forgot the torture porn. Yeah. I it, thought that's what they no, were. No, 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 no. They're not all that. They're, like, it's almost, oh, it's almost okay. turned into a political I mean, not and not to say it in that way with election year, but yeah, the first movie is about like, okay, it's taking, it's purge night. What happens surrounding this one family who is trying to survive the night? And then the next one evolves into seeing what happens in the street when it, someone wants revenge is on Frank, purge night Frank and dealing Grillo with it. Frank Grillo in all these? Frank Grillo comes into the second one and then he's, he's second in into the third. the third. Okay. And then by the third one, what happens is there's a new politician stepping up trying to uh trying from to Lost. eliminate is that where she's from? Or Frank Grillo's from Lost? No, no. I don't J- Juliet. It's Juliet okay. from Lost. I, d- I don't uh, Hello, Tim Allen's wife in the Santa Claus two and three. You know I have never watched any Lost. I forget that. I, I just I haven't. So one day I will. But at this point, I haven't. Um, in the third one, then, yeah, she uh, she wants to get rid of the purge, and because of the impact it's having on the world, uh, just just get rid of the purge entirely. Elizabeth Mitchell, that's her name. Sorry. There you go. Mm-hmm. And um, and then it's about how the government's trying to kill her, and Frank Grillo has to do what he can to uh, to protect her in that. So the purge movies are again, they're not. These aren't like you know they're movies that I would rate like six out of ten, but they're still actually pretty well made. Um, okay, I, I would watch them. the The scare zone's going to be fun with it. A scare zone, I know I am going to eat up and enjoy. Set in San Francisco, invasion. Visitors from far beyond have crashed their vessel and are now wreaking havoc on the streets of San Francisco. Um, is this where the fifties was last time? The vampire one. No, that was in Hollywood. San Francisco was back by Fast and oh, Furious. Oh, I'm sorry. That's where, I was getting mixed up. That's where um, last year it was the, I don't remember the official name, but all the, the semen. This, <laughs> I remember. Um, it was, uh, so, is all, did they say what, like, what the, it's alien invasion, right? Yeah, it's invasion with an exclamation point. They aren't just here to destroy. These invaders are also on a mission to learn everything they can about us humans. Careful, or you may find yourself on an experiment table at the mercy of an alien scientist. Gosh, I wonder what it's gonna, what the, what the aesthetic's gonna be like, like Independence Day or like 1960s aliens. Oh, I'm hoping they go 50s and 60s, like with the big circular helmets and like the, the, like you know, the space is all silver Uh, and foily. Yeah, you know, very, very like terror from beyond outer space. And um, yeah, I hope they go that whole aesthetic. Like these are. You know, maybe in the background having playing like stupid crappy '60s pop songs too. I'm not, I'm not saying all '60s pop songs are crappy. I'm you talking like about something monkeys. like uh, not the monkeys. Sorry. No, I'm talking about like playing like one-eyed uh, people, the People Eater song, Purple People Eater, Purple People Eater, and something like that in the back. You know, just uh, something you would expect at the sci-fi dine-in in the background okay. of there. So, um, but who knows? It, it could end up just being like you said, try to go with the more modern scary as L- like, like, like really mutant looking aliens or versus like, I'm talking like almond head. Yeah. Big eye, you know, stuff, stuff you would see. Yeah. I, I, tell you, I just think it's easier with, if you go with like little green men coming from Mars type style with that you can play it up as goofy and campy and you know just like a fun scare zone to go through if you go the other way you can make like these terrifying looking aliens um that in their minds are terrifying and other people might just be like yeah it's it's weird but um i i my only concern is we were just at universal again that area in between fast and furious's construction wall where disaster used to be 
and to the water. It's a tiny it area. It's so tight. Yeah. Yeah. And it's very... Last year, because they had the boat halfway out into the middle of the walking path, it was so crowded to get through. So I'm really hoping that this year they... Uh, they fix that up a little bit, so um, that way it's a lot smoother to get through. But then the next house, uh, sorry, scare zone we're going to talk about is um, is the one in Hollywood. <coughs> since you brought that up, and this one will be Festival of the Deadliest. Mm. So an ancient tradition from the depths of where nightmares are born. Yeah, mm. I know scary huh so a gathering of the most unearthly hellish terrors has emerged from the darkest corners of despair it calls to those who those who long for the thrill of the scare and wish to have their fears made real you'll be drawn like moths to a flame and once you join this hallowed celebration your nightmares will never end but yeah i i don't know i don't know that doesn't yeah. really say what it's it just essentially it's like oh it's a scare zone <laughs> like yeah. Okay. Cool. And it's probably going to be like demons and stuff. Like I'm assuming there's we're going to see a devil monster. Yeah. To me, this one just feels very generic. Um, yeah. Unfortunate that it's in the big space too. Yeah, but usually, well, like you had fifties vamp one. Well, yeah. You mentioned vamp fifty, uh, vamp fifty five. The nice thing about that scare zone is even when. You know, even when it's not the theme isn't great in there, um, I, I feel like they still. They know how to light that area of the park so well for Halloween Horror Nights that you're still going to get, like, you're going to be able to take cool photos. And they're, they're going to have stuff going on that's entertaining. Um, you know, it's just, it's a shame that this area of the park, the past two years, have been so good. Yeah. With um, last year being Vamp uh, 55, and then the year before that was where you had some of the past HHN icons doing their their killings in that area so um it's uh, yeah it just it, I, i'm not very excited about this one but it's also just so vague that it's really hard to get behind the rest you can start to imagine what it could be like um in there in this one I, I just have nothing but let's end up the scare zone talk with the one i am just out of my freaking mind for um mm -hmm. something i've been waiting for for as long as i've been going to horror nights and have seen this movie and that is trick or treat which yes. will be in central park so i'm looking forward to seeing a little sam run around oh sam's a okay so i have this weird like it was almost like they were foreshadowing do you remember the, well do you remember do you, you you know that they play universal loves their games mm -hmm. and there was like you could you pay like the five bucks whatever to shoot the five hoops and if you get like four of them yeah. in, you get a prize well there was like little stuffed freddy little stuffed jason and i tried to play this last year because there was a little stuffed sam and i wanted that sam and well, i'm almost like was that foreshadowing well there there is the connection so um universal a couple of years ago they released uh distributed the movie krampus which was by michael doherty mm -hmm. and um of course the person who made trick-or-treat is also michael doherty so that that's why last year walking through the um walking through the krampus house there is actually in several locations there was sam's lollipop oh, hidden throughout the house that's so cool. yeah no this so it all you know it, it that could be an omen that you know that could be like a premonition that they were going to do that this year in, in the past I feel like a couple times when they've gone down the aesthetic um, of having like trick or treaters and out and about, it always felt like they were trying to do trick or treat. They just weren't calling it trick or treat. So um, this, but now this one is going to be official. So Sam will be there. Um, I'm sure if you've seen, if you haven't seen the movie yet, it is one of the best Halloween movies in general. Um, it's campy. There's a couple jump moments to it, but I. I don't know if there's a more perfect Halloween movie out there because it's it's an anthology film. It's all it's all about what's happening on Halloween night and follows different stories. It follows a story of one couple taking down their Halloween decorations at the end of the night. It follows another story about a mysterious group group of uh, girls um, that are bouncing around to parties. Um, yeah. This shows another story of these kids who were looking for this, uh, looking for the site where, uh, bus vanished 
in the past at one point in time and you know they think that the the ghosts of the kids or the zombies of the kids are still around and i'm not going to give any spoilers on to what happens and how they all connect together but it really encompasses so many so many different tropes of it from werewolves to to zombies to you know everything you would expect out of one one particular halloween story so uh i i think this is going to be amazing. We were already um, we were already over at Universal this week to look at some of the updates for Halloween Horror Nights, and uh, I would say for the most part now, Central Park for Trick or Treat is completely finished. Um, oh, I, it looks wonderful. Yeah, they're they're going to start adding uh, more little hidden touches, I'm sure, throughout the the next couple weeks before we get up to the event. But um, just the whole area there's pumpkins littering the trees all around they have they have all the doors set up for the neighborhood yeah um really all we're missing is seeing which which I characters wish are going to be in there this was i get why it's where it is so they, yeah. they could put all the pumpkins in the trees and stuff like that i wish this was in a bigger area because i feel like this is going to be a fun fun little scare zone yeah no aesthetic this is the only place for it this is a place that makes the most sense but i'm right there with you i would I would love to see this on a bigger scale in like New York or you know, Hollywood. It's just a little too bland, but um, I'd love to see it more. But yeah, that's our uh, that is our scare zone and show lineup. So if you're keeping tally at home, like I'm sure you uh, you are, that means so far we have our five scare zones announced. We have our two shows. We have. We are still waiting on our one intellectual property house and the rest of our original houses, which will uh, be coming soon. And the one, the one thing I can't really say anything about it, but um, uh, you know, we talked about last week when we were saying waiting on that Blum House announcement for that house. I mean, yeah, now you can start to see the facade right beside Men in Black, where it is like it's undoubtedly going to be Blum House. Um, if you look at the logo for their production company uh, image, like, and then you you look at the front of the house, it looks like it's setting up to be the exact oh, same. Oh, that's um, okay. Yeah, I I'll have to find the picture that someone posted side by side on Twitter and give that person credit. I can't I can't remember it off the top of my head right now okay. who did it. But go to their um, website. There's a picture of a Chucky bath bomb. Oh, it's like a ba- it's this looks. Why would you drop this in a bathtub with you? Oh, I, I, if I had kids, I would do that. Terrorize <laughs> them. Um, yeah, no, it's uh, so we're still waiting on that. But for the original houses, that map that uh, circulated around with the predictions of the houses, all I can say is from what I've been told, the intellectual property houses that they guessed were all 100 percent correct. But the original houses, the names and the ideas they came up with are not. So, but I could be wrong on that. My my source could be wrong, but I have a feeling that uh, for those who have been like living and dying by that map, that they will be surprised when. Which is good. I I don't like when it all comes out at once too early. Yeah. So I'm happy that it was like there's some surprises. Yeah. No. I and, surprises. No. That, that. But the originals are always a surprise, and they're always like a happy surprise because you know as long as they're not 3D houses, they're usually <laughs> generally very entertaining. <laughs> but that is going to do it for this HHN discussion, and we are going to move on by playing you our featured snack review for this week. As I said, I'm not going to give it away, so you are just going to have to watch this video to, or if you're listening to it, you're going to have to listen to this video and find out what we got and how we felt about it. Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome to Springfield, USA. Yes. Yes. So we are here for our next snack, as we've already told you before, and, uh, Luckily, the snack we're going to is just right behind us. If you see that little lard lad there, yeah, Rhino's holding that donut up. And yeah, we all know that donuts make him go nuts. Um, Rhino, obviously the, the, the big pink donut, that's kind of like the go-to thing at lard lad. Yeah. But we're not getting the go-to thing, no, are no, we? No, 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 because there's a special type of donut Sunday they do here called... I can't remember, but we'll figure it out when we get up to that sign up there. Yeah. But they slice it in half, and they put soft serve ice cream in the middle, and then they load it up with a topping and do some whipped cream and a cherry right on top, like a good old Sunday has. That sounds delicious. So I've never actually had this before. 
I've seen uh, it. I've never had yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, people are always walking around with it, and it looks delicious, especially yep. on a hot summer's eve here in Florida. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm never going to say no to ice cream. I will literally yeah. find any excuse to eat some, uh, ice cream. So. Oh, I was going to go home and eat uh, good Publix ice cream, but I guess uh, this is time. just as good. So let's stop wasting time. Let's get over to Lard Lad and let's get us a donut sundae. Okay, Rhino, what is on the donut sundae? Um, well, what they did is they sliced our donut in half, and it's one of the pink donuts with the sprinkles on it. Uh, but if you can see, we went with Oreo as our topping. It was the recommended topping. You got yourself Oreo, sitting on Oreo, vanilla soft syrup with Oreo, sitting on top the bottom of the donut. You can see it down there if I dig through. See on the bottom, very down there. And then ice cream. Then they got the top of the donut, pink frosting, sprinkles, whipped cream, and a cherry on top. First, I'm just going to sample the ice cream real quick here. I'm going to just get that. There's nothing really like ice cream on a hot day. So I, 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 I feel like I'm going to be biased either way. Now I'm going to try and like push through here to get a little bit of the donut without destroying it completely so Craig can get some of the action in there too so all right so I'm going in for a little bit of donut a little bit of ice cream and I, I've mauled this okay I'm just gonna eat it welcome to your ride is about to begin please remain seated until the very end of the ride you will know the ride is ended when your I don't know what to think about it yet. I mean, it's good. You, you, it's a donut with ice cream. It's pretty much self-explanatory. I, I'm, I don't want to weigh in yet, Craig. I'm gonna let you take a bite. You let me. Uh, you tell me what you think. Oh God, that is, that is thick ice cream. <laughs> I don't think we were in danger of it melting. It wouldn't melt if it was on the sun. It's unnatural. Mm. Okay, so. Just to keep going on this, because I don't remember if you said it so far. For a giant pink donut, the big donut, the pink one, it's $5.99. For the donut sundae, you don't get the big pink donut, you get a small version of it. Um, and then, but you get it as a sundae for $6.99. My issue starting off the front is while I love the idea of it, it was the choice of toppings that was tough. You had you had chocolate syrup, caramel, Reese's Pieces, uh, peanuts, peanuts, Oreos. It was just really hard to like settle on one thing. And you know, I probably I think caramel sounds the most natural. I agree. Or not caramel, sorry, chocolate. Oh. But nah, I mean, caramel could have been good too. One of those sounds natural, but I'm not sure how they'd come off, but. So that was a donut Oreo bite you got there. Okay. Okay, yeah, I mean, I think the shocking thing about it on the first bite, you think all the sweetness is gonna come from the ice cream and the Oreos and the whipped topping, but then the pink donut frosting just like hits hard and you get this super intense taste of sweetness but I can't lie something's throwing me off with the texture of the Oreos just not jiving but we'll keep at it here I agree with you. Um, the, there's something weird about the texture. I don't know what it is. It's not the donut and the ice cream I don't like, or even the Oreo. I mean, I think it is the ice cream. I think it's, um, I'm used to um, like soft serve being frozen yogurt, I think. And this is straight up soft serve like ice cream. And I think maybe that's what threw me a little bit. But it is like, the ice cream is very thick for soft serve. It feels very, 
I don't know. It definitely tastes different than... Uh, not, in a, not in a bad way. I don't know. I know this is a terrible, terrible review of me just saying I don't know how to describe it, but it is really thick ice cream and the texture does do something weird. I do agree with Craig though. You take a bite of this and I'd say the sweetness you're getting is like the donut. It's, it, is, it is very present on the donut. I think this is a great idea. Ice cream with a donut though? Mm. Oh, great. I think we did come to the conclusion on what's throwing us off here and it might in fact be mostly just the ice cream because of that thickness um, you know you mentioned it's not just like a yogurt it's it's dense um, I, I don't know the ice cream's not terrible but there's nothing special about it um, but overall is a dish, is a dessert, a fun snack to get for $6.99. Um, no discounts or anything, just just straight that. I think this is actually really, really awesome. Um, the only change I would probably make as I take this big bite and then talk to you. Apologize. I just had to. It was it was too delicious. Um, I would almost like to see this as like a little bit more like kind of like a cookie ice cream sandwich, but with just the donut instead. It's great the way it is, like massive amount of ice cream and the donut in between. But there is absolutely no way in the world you could ever take this on the go. Um, you have to sit down and eat this. I mean, yeah, you can walk with the bowl. I just feel like something handheld where you get it all over yourself and your kids look disgusting because they're covered in ice cream. I think it's just a little bit, maybe a little bit more effective, but got to keep finishing this instead of talking and blabbing on about it. Okay, Rhino, what do we think? Um, I think overall, I think what you said, it's a really good price for, I don't, I, I'm not judging you if you as one person eat that by yourself, but I think this can feed at least two people, maybe even three. I don't well, know about after three, I'd be slapping hands out of the bowl, but um, I think on a hot summer day, you really can't beat a sugar rush with some nice cold ice cream in there. I wish maybe it had been hard packed ice cream or frozen yogurt. I think that would have made the difference for me. And also maybe different flavors instead of just, it was only vanilla and chocolate were the, uh, the options. Maybe a strawberry in there would actually have been good. Yeah. But um, I'd say give it a try. I'd say it's definitely worth a try. I'd say it's worth. I'd say it's worth your amount of money. Yeah, I um, I, I'd agree to that to an extent. I think my issue with it overall, while I think it's a great price, um, definitely something delicious. It still doesn't feel like extremely unique to me. Yes, it's in Springfield and it's a pink donut. Um, the donut but was really good. I, I feel like this is kind of just a standard treat, whereas when you go back to Diagon Alley right across the way from us or over to Hogsmeade and you get something in the Wizarding World, that feels truly unique. Like, I can only get these at Universal Parks. I, I, I know you can get a donut sundae somewhere else. And yeah. so it doesn't, I don't want it to take away from it that much, but, um, you know, overall, it's good, it's tasty, but... As far as Maybe snacks it's go just in Universal, unique. though, I think that other than Harry Potter, this yeah. is probably one of the more unique. Yeah, oh, I would agree, but that's I think that's more of a call to Universal. Just keep doing more unique food yeah, items. Yeah. That's there's something there's something out there that's going to be really delicious. I, I know that much. And maybe it's just that we haven't found it yet, but we will, um, and we will keep trying. Yes, we will. So um, that's going to do it from here. So let's get back to that studio. What a squishy. Okay, right now. So, mm -hmm. how did so after we left the park with that? How did that all settle with you? Do you did you still feel the same about it? Yeah, I, I still think like it's not something I wouldn't get again. If it was somebody like I was with friends and they were like, "Oh, that looks good. Let's try it." I'd be like, "Okay, let's go. You know, let's share it." Like like I said in the the video, the donut's really good. It's just something off about that ice yeah. cream. I don't know what it was. I think it was just kind of the ice cream was bland. Yeah. Uh, bleh.
For for me, I got home and I looked in my fridge or my freezer and I saw my Publix, uh, uh, my fudge cappuccino blitz ice cream. And I, I just kept staring at it. I'm like, I can't eat this today because I already, uh, I already had a dessert. Halo Top is where it's at for me. And there are so many flavors of Halo Top in my freezer that I was even like, do I take a big scoop of this and wash out the other one? The, the problem with Halo Top is it's like skim milk. It's good once you get used to it and you're just having that all the time. And then once you go back to the original, it's like, oh, God, why, why was I ever... I don't feel Why that did way I about ever milk. sacrifice? What? I don't feel that way about milk. Skim milk will make me sick now when I drink it because my mom put me on skim. I I only drink skim milk. Sorry. Oh. Yeah, because my mom put me on it when I was in like second grade, and now I my body has developed a disgust for it. Uh, see whole what? milk. Ugh. It's like fat. You're just drinking fat. Well, the cows. No, I see. I never. I drank two percent and then went into to skim. So a little bit, a little bit less of a transition. But no, I am. I'm telling you. It, Halo Top's great. It's great. Good protein, all that stuff. Yeah. Stevia, you know, they're still, still I, out on the science I love that. regular ice cream, too. I love, and you're right, Publix makes a good ice cream. Those flavors they do, mm, they do a good, it just, I know it's simple, but there's a good eggnog one around Christmas, oh, and yeah. then they, they do this, like, pumpkin pie one in the fall. Oh, you, they're, they're limited edition ice creams mm, are yeah, off the chain. Oh, God, so good. There's a peppermint one they do. So good. I, I feel like I'm starting to realize that I'm getting old when I realize that this episode I have said off the chain and one other <laughs> like one other thing that probably said jokingly like five years ago and now it's like stuck in my head like this is hip. Well, I now shouldn't open the episode like what's up? <laughs> what's up? I now know what it's like to be like a 50 year old woman trying to say what's up, my homies. <laughs> like Jane in that episode of Happy Endings where she's like, it's on like Donkey Tron. Okay, Jane, you sound like a, a, a middle-aged divorcee trying to talk to her stepkids. <laughs> Les les bon temps roulés. <laughs> I guarantee. Um, but, no, but I, I yeah, it, it's like, it, it's, it's, what I like is, I, I know you said in the video about it not being like the most creative thing in the world, but I still think like, uh, as far as the things that you could get, like, okay, any dessert you're going to get at a theme park is going to be terrible for you. And that's part of the fun yeah. because you're on vacation or you're just having a day out, you know, like, I, I, so I, I like to say like, go full force, get a donut and the ice cream together. So that's what I love about it. Like, I don't know. I agree. So, um, you know, there is something special about eating it there. So I, I will not disagree that there aren't benefits to it but um as as we said in the video go ahead and let us know down below in the comments uh if you do have any other snack recommendations that we should go out and get um and just anything you have to say about the show we are interested in seeing so don't forget to comment um but that is going to do it for this week's show so thank you so much everyone out there for uh, listening and watching to this watching this thank you so much rhino for having this conversation with me oh you're welcome good it was very good um of course if you need any more information on this show or the other shows on the dis unplugged podcast network please head over to dis unplugged.com home of our show notes um and if you need our email address which is uo podcast at dis unplugged.com you can find it there in case you just didn't write it down there you can also find links to all of our social media channels on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all of the good places that is. Um, and make sure if you're watching this on YouTube that you are subscribed to us on the Tis Unplugged YouTube channel as well as uh, hitting that thumbs up button and leaving comments. Uh, and of course, sharing the video. Make sure you share it. Uh, that's that's the best way to get this out there for more people. And if you're listening to this on iTunes, please uh, make sure you are subscribed and you are rating and reviewing us. So that is going going to do it for this week's episode we hope you enjoyed it and we will be back again next week with another episode of the dis unplugged universal edition and until then remember no resolutions